The following program is sponsored by Yahweh TV, in partnership with Matimba Online Store. Matimba Online Store, located on matimbapower.com website. We sell music, ebooks, audiobooks, and sermons. Consider buying airtime with Yahweh TV to enrich lives and glorify Christ. You also can launch, market, and sell your products live on Yahweh TV Online Studio. To all recording gospel artists all over the world. Did you know you can DJ your own music on Yahweh TV Online Studio, and reach an audience in over 38 nations of the world? Consider promoting your Christian events, or running your youth, marriage or children's programs, live on Yahweh TV. Matimba Online Store, in partnership with Yahweh TV, enriching lives, glorifying Christ. Yeah, it's only the um, faithful ones. I guess, I think it's the one who The following program is sponsored by Yahweh TV, in partnership with Matimba Online Store. Matimba Online Store, located on matimbapower.com website. We sell music, ebooks, audiobooks, and sermons. Consider buying airtime with Yahweh TV to enrich lives and glorify Christ. You also can launch, market, and sell your products live on Yahweh TV Online Studio. To all recording gospel artists all over the world. Did you know you can DJ your own music on Yahweh TV Online Studio, and reach an audience in over 38 nations of the world? Consider promoting your Christian events, or running your youth, marriage or children's programs, live on Yahweh TV. Matimba Online Store, in partnership with Yahweh TV, enriching lives, glorifying Christ. everyone my name is uh percy bland i am pastor percy bland and i it is a distinct pleasure to be here to share god's word with you today i am bringing you greetings from pentecostal house of prayer in aston pennsylvania i'd like to share a word with you today first let's open with the word of prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to come before your people. We ask God that you would word our mouth and give us the understanding and clarity that we would need in order to comprehend and get the fullness out of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I want to direct your attention today. First of all, I want to thank God uh, uh, Pastor Matimba Power for this opportunity to come on Yahweh TV. If you would, if you would uh, direct your attention to the scriptures today out of the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4 and verse 12. We will start there and go back and reference uh, a few other scriptures. In that scripture, you will find these words. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We are here today to find out who is that person what is that person's name and why is it that that is the only name under heaven that is given among men that offers salvation salvation is found in no one else but there is no other name under heaven that is given to mankind by which we must be saved this name is the name of Jesus Christ. Let us explore 
this foundational principle of our faith and understand why Jesus Christ is the only Savior. To comprehend the significance of Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12, we first must understand the context in which it was spoken. In Acts chapter 3, the previous chapter, and the first verse, I will read. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. The ninth hour being about three o'clock in the morning. Verse number two says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily. This was a man that had no strength in his legs. He was lame. He was crippled. He could not walk. He lacked the inability to be able to walk. And so it must have been that someone carried him to this temple every day, even from a child. The Bible says at the gate of temple, which is called beautiful. And he was there to ask alms of them who entered into the temple. In other words, he was a beggar that was asking for money. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked of alms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. This beggar was expecting to receive money from Peter and John as he had probably received from people earlier that day. But he received something much better than money that day. As Peter said to him in verse number six, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. It is not in the name of Muhammad, not in the name of Confucius, but he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the Bible indicates that he grabbed him by his right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God, just as he should have. Whenever the Lord does anything for you, he is looking for us to praise him and to give him the glory for that. Now, through the power of the name of Jesus, the man miraculously was restored to hell, drawing attention to the authority of Jesus Christ, that name. However, the miraculous miracle, the miraculous act incited anger and wrath of the religious authorities of that day, just as it does today. Whenever God does something out of the ordinary, Never believe, my brothers and my sisters, that God, that everyone is going to rejoice with you. Someone is going to be angry that you are now free and able to do for yourself. This wrath is shown in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. Let's walk over there. Here we'll find that they called them, Peter and John, and they commanded them not to speak nor teach 
in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. My brothers, when God has done something for you, my sisters, when God has done something for you, it is our obligation to tell everyone that we meet that what you have seen or what you see now is not me at all, but it is all by the power of that name of Jesus Christ. When I think some 44 years ago, 45 years ago, when I was one that was stricken by the hand of drugs and alcohol, when I had no hope, when my outlook was dark and I didn't know which way to go, my friends, when it was the name of Jesus Christ, it was the name of Jesus Christ that delivered me. And ever since that day, I don't hesitate to tell anyone that my deliverance and my salvation came from that name, the name of Jesus Christ. In Acts 4 and 12, let's go back to the main text. It declares that salvation is found in no one else but the name of Jesus Christ. This statement stands in stark contrast to the pluralistic ideologies that are pre prevalent in the world today. Those that advocate for the equality of all religious paths. Those that say there's more than one way to be saved. There's more than one name. I tell you, my friend, this is a grave mistake. For Acts 4 and 12 tells us that it is the name of Jesus. The Bible affirms the exclusivity of Jesus Christ as the only means of salvation. In John 14 and 6, Jesus, after being asked the question of Thomas, Lord, we don't know the way. How can we know the way? In verse 6 of the St. John chapter 14, Jesus declares, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is the name of Jesus, that name. The power and authority of Jesus' name are emphasized throughout the entire New Testament, particularly in the book of Acts. In Acts 4 and 7, it records the question posed by the religious leaders, by Peter and John. By what power or by what name do you do this? How did you do this miracle? Who gives you the authority to do this? And Peter's response in Acts 4 and 10 reinforces the centrality of Jesus' name in the miracle of healing. As he said, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God has now raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. It is the name of Jesus none other name salvation encompasses a multifaceted concept that carries profound theological significance throughout the bible it denotes deliverance rescue and redemption from sin and its consequences leading to the reconciliation with God and the restoration of humanity relationship with God. Let's get into more of a detailed exploration of what salvation 
means scripturally. Number one, it's the deliverance of sin, from sin, the deliverance from sin. The Bible says in Matthew 1 and 21, that she shall bring forth a son, his name shall be called Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sin. At its core, salvation entails deliverance from sin, which separates humanity from God. In Romans 3, 23, the Bible states that we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Highlighting the universal condition of human sinfulness. Salvation addresses this fundamental problem by providing a way for you and me to be freed from the guilt and the power of sin. Number two, salvation is the redemption through Christ's sacrifice. The heart of salvation lies in the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. In Ephesians 1 and 7, the Bible declares, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Through his death, through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, Jesus paid the penalty for humanity's sin, offering forgiveness and reconciliation to all who believe in him. That gap, that chasm, that was between man and God. Man being separated from God because of his sins. On the cross, if you can depict this illustration, God grabbing Jesus, grabbing our hand, on one side and grabbing God's hand on the other side. And by the finishing the work on the cross, brought mankind and God back together. He paid the price. He paid the price for our sins. He paid the price for our healing. The work on the cross was the finished work that did it. No more sacrificing of cows and bulls and calves every year having to come back and back and back. But that one lamb, Jesus Christ, did it forever. The third thing is reconciliation with God. As I have alluded to earlier, salvation entails reconciliation with God, restoring the broken relationship with humanity and its creator. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. The Bible explains all this is from God. Who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And then gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself with Christ. In Christ not counting people's sins against them. Through Jesus Christ, believers are brought near to God and adopted into the family as beloved children. Isn't it wonderful that God loved us enough to send his only begotten son to deliver us from sin, to redeem us, to reconcile us back to God because God loves you my friend God loves you and God loves you especially then salvation brings transformation and renewal salvation involves a transformative uh, transformative process wherein believers are renewed in heart in mind and in spirit 
Romans chapter 12, verse 2 exhorts us, saying, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Is good, pleasing, and perfect will. This transformation is facilitated by the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost, who empowers believers to live in obedience to God's will. I'll say that again. The Holy Ghost empowers believers to live in obedience to God's will. You will never experience abundant life and great deliverance from sin until you allow the Holy Spirit to empower you. And this is why Jesus found it imperative to say to the disciples that had been with them and seen miracles and done all types of things. Jesus found himself telling them in Luke chapter 24, verses 49, to go to Jerusalem. Well, I have something else after I'm gone that I'm going to give you. He says, go there. And we know what the Bible says in this book, chapter 2, that they received the Holy Spirit. And from the Holy Spirit, they were able to do great and wondrous works. And then what salvation does is that salvation gives us eternal life and hope. Salvation secures believers' eternal destiny, and it offers hope for the future. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Salvation, my friends, that's salvation. Through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ, believers receive the gift of eternal life, enjoying fellowship with God in the present age and for all eternity. Then what I love about it is that he, the last thing he gives us victory over death and judgment. Salvation grants victory over death and the promise of future resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55 to 57, it triumphantly declares, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin the power of sin is a law but thanks be to god he gives us victory through our lord jesus christ in summary i'd like to say that salvation encompasses deliverance from sin redemptive power through jesus's sacrifice sacrifice reconciliation with god transformation and renewal eternal hope and life and victory over death. It is a comprehensive and life-changing realities, my brothers and sisters, that shapes the identity and the destiny of every believer over offering us freedom, forgiveness, and the promise of abundant life, both now and forever. Salvation brings abundant life. Salvation brings joy. Peter one time muscled up the audacity to ask Jesus or to say to Jesus, we have left all to follow you. Jesus looked at him and said, there's not a one of you that has not left family, friends, all of these to follow me and shall not receive 100 fold of what you, of what you will get on this life plus eternal life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us today to proclaim his name and to the ends of the earth that everyone may come to know the saving power of his grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Maybe you have not experienced 
this salvation. Maybe you would like to know this power, this name, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. If you would like to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you would like to know him in the power of his resurrection. I'd ask you to pray with me right now. Repeat these words after me, Lord Jesus. I don't know you, but I want to know you. I love you. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died on the cross and rose three days later. Lord Jesus, rise up in my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it, my friend. You now can live that abundant life in Christ. You now have the name that is able to provide, protect, and to keep you in any circumstance. May the Lord bless you and keep you always. Amen. The following program is sponsored by Yahweh TV, in partnership with Matimba Online Store. Matimba Online Store, located on matimbapower.com website. We sell music, ebooks, audiobooks, and sermons. Consider buying airtime with Yahweh TV to enrich lives and glorify Christ. You also can launch, market, and sell your products live on Yahweh TV Online Studio. To all recording gospel artists all over the world, did you know you can DJ your own music on Yahweh TV Online Studio and reach an audience in over 38 nations of the world? Consider promoting your Christian events or running your youth, marriage or children's programs live on Yahweh TV. Matimba Online Store, in partnership with Yahweh TV, enriching lives, glorifying Christ.